Hello VAC fans and welcome to iBasiac. Well today I've got a demonstration for you of a very, very old girl. I'm not sure how she's going to cope in this modern home, especially with all the dirt that I'm going to throw down in front of her. But hopefully she'll come through with flying colours because she's British. No made in China rubbish today. Just good solid British engineering. Where is she then? Where is this fantastic old cleaner? Well, here she is, the Hooverette. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you may have seen me unboxing this old girl when I first received her. And she was in a sorry state, unloved, forgotten, and dirty. Very, very dirty. But with a bit of spit and polish, well, not, not literally spit, certainly with polish and uh, some fairy liquid, other washing up liquids are available. I managed to restore her to almost showroom finish. She is very lovely and clean now and shiny as a new pin. But she may look new on the outside but she's still got an old motor inside. It's like, it's like a, a, a young lady, or sorry, an old lady who's had a facelift, had her boobs done, had everything, had the bingo wings removed only to have a, a week old ticker inside. So what's on the surface might hide some decaying inside. You never know. Anyway, that's what might happen with this. Let's get on with it, shall we? I'll first take you on a guided tour of the machine and all the accessories I got with her. And then it's first actually into my kitchen where there's rather a lot of mess left over from a previous vacuum demo. Well, here's the full cleaning ensemble that uh, you get with a Hooverette. This is complete. This is everything you should have got when it came out of the factory. I do have the instruction book. I flick through it in the unboxing video. So if you haven't seen that, you can click on the link below and you can check out the unboxing video if you want to see what this looked like when I received it. So here we have the main carpet and floor nozzle, a very retro blue colour. I'm not sure what Hoover call this blue, but I'm sure they had some sort of name for it. Possibly Wedgwood blue, perhaps. And as you can see, it's got the Hoover roundel on it. And underneath, I managed to clean it up fairly well. It wasn't that bad, I don't think. Could do with a little bit more work on the brushes. But there we have it. It's, it's rather like a small version of the head that used to get with some Hoover cylinder cleaners, like the Constellation and the Harlequin, I believe. It's just a smaller version. So you've got a floating brush, you can have it in the floating position, so basically it moves up and down for your carpets. For your hard floors you can have it in the locked position, so that's setting two on this, and then the brush remains out for cleaning hard floors, or perhaps leaving it out if you want to give your carpets a bit of extra agitation. When I test it on carpets I'll be doing it in the floating mode I think. And at the front, still in very good condition, are uh, the rubber teeth. I believe they help pick up pet hairs and more clinging litter. Such as, I don't know, sewing yarns and things. I expect in the day when this machine was in the shops, a lot of ladies would have still made their own clothes or fixed their old ones. And they might have got the hooverette out to pick up any debris left by their hobby. So there we go, that's the main carpet and floor nozzle. Here is the hard floor buffing pad, I think Hoover called it, for your wood floors, etc. I might try this actually on my floor, as well as using this nozzle. We'll see if it makes any difference. That clips on. Mm, I'm not sure if it's going to pick up very well with that on it. It's quite um, limited for suction on this machine, but it's, it, it is old. It might have been more powerful when it was new. But it could actually, I suppose it concentrates the suction in these little areas here. So it might work better. I'll try it both ways. We'll try it with, with the buffing pad and without. Put that to one side. Here's the metal extension tube. You can use that in two ways. It forms the handle of the machine, but you can also attach it to the other end of the machine or to the hose to give you extra reach. Naturally it's metal, again finished in this lovely satin blue colour. And if we have a look at the metal catch, you can see how clean I've managed to get that. Just a little bit of metal polish 
that was very dirty when I got it. But I'm really pleased. I'm not even sure if it was supposed to shine like that when it was new. It might have been a matte finish, I don't know. I've never seen one shiny, but then I'm not that old to know when this machine was in the shops. I never saw one of these. I did possibly see an orange one in the 70s, but this is much earlier than that. Then we have Hoover's standard crevice tool with the Hoover branding on it. I can't know if I can hold that right so you can see. It's a little bit difficult. Can you see it? Is it focusing? And of course it's the Hoover standard pip fitting. The pip is intact. Here's Hoover's all-purpose brush. I believe they called this as opposed to the all-purpose nozzle they had. This has a brush so it can be used for all purposes. You can use it on your upholstery, you can use it on your curtains, your stairs, but the brush is still soft enough to dust your furniture with if you wanted to. This is the handle. Now it's got holes in it because this is where the exhaust air comes out of the machine. You'll see when I've attached it, you'll see how it all fits together. But this is where the exhaust air would vent from when the handle's attached. And you even have a little loop so you can hang your hooverette up in your cupboard under your stairs or in your pantry. If you had a pantry, some ladies would have had a pantry back then. And again, it's got the Hoover embossed logo on. Not really sure if that's picking up on camera, but you know what that looks like by now, I'm sure. And finally, I've got the carrying strap so I can wear the machine when I'm cleaning the stairs or cleaning my curtains or my upholstery. And I'll be modeling it for you later on in the video. Excuse any noise you can hear. People will insist on driving by. I don't know why. Cannot they stay out at work longer and leave me in peace? No, they have to come home, honestly. Selfish. Here is the Hooverette itself. Very sort of space age looking. Even back then, well, it would have looked space age back then, but even now, that's what I meant to say. It's kind of, it's kind of futuristic and retro. I know that's a bit of a contradiction, but you know what I'm trying to get at, possibly. Maybe you don't. But here is the main unit. It's bagged, of course. I'll show you the bag in a moment. This is the exhaust vent, so the, the air blows out of here. But this is also where you attach the handle. This end, of course, is the suction end. You can attach the tools directly to that if you want to. You can attach the hose, which I haven't shown you. I've just remembered it's there behind me. I'll show you that in a minute. You can attach the hose or you can attach the extension tube to it. It's got a um, carry handle, two anchor points there. That's for the shoulder strap. What else can I show you? This is the button you press to release the extension tube, which is also, of course, part of the handle. And the button at the front, the same, releases the nozzle at the front. Two metal catches that release the end cap to give us access to the bag. And underneath, it's a little bit scuffed underneath, there we go. Is it that? Is that in focus for you? Hooverette model, whatever it says. Model 2944, 225 to 250 volts. 240 watts. Made by Hoover Limited, Great Britain. Right, before I show you the bag, let me just show you the hose. Completely forgot, forgot about the hose. Again, finished in this lovely satin blue colour. And again, I've managed to polish up this metal catch looks lovely, doesn't it? So it's as near as new as I can get it. It's not, of course, perfect. I wouldn't expect a cleaner of this age to be perfect. Again, embossed with the Hoover logo. Is the camera focusing? I'm not sure. It's a stretch hose, but you know, it's not going to give you much stretch. But then again, you can be carrying the cleaner or wearing it, so you don't need much of a stretch. That's the end that goes into the cleaner. Of course, that's the end where you put the cleaning tools. Okay, let's have a look at the bag. So to empty the machine, it's probably best if we stand it on end. That'll avoid any dirt from falling out. Not that there's any dirt in here now, but there soon will be. Two metal catches either side. And then you can take the end cap off. Now, one thing that has perished, there would have been a little flap here which helps prevent any dirt from falling out of the machine when you turn it upside down, but unfortunately that, 
that was not savable. I might be able to get something to go over there, but uh, I don't suppose I'll be using this cleaner after the demo. Here is the cloth bag. I think it was in fairly good condition. I can't remember. Was it full of muck? I think there was a paper bag inside this, so the cloth bag stayed fairly clean. I think I vacuumed this. I haven't risked washing it. You could use the machine with just the cloth bag, but you could buy disposable bags, or dispose all bags, who called them, that fit inside. Unfortunately, I've searched and they're no longer available. I thought I had a pack, but I can't find it. But I understand I can get Hoover Junior bags and just cut them to size. I haven't got any Hoover Junior bags at the moment that I want to use for this. So it's not ideal, but I've cut up another bag from a Hoover Pure Power. It's actually a fleecy bag, so I'm going to put that inside to keep the cloth bag a bit cleaner. There's a bit of a seal around here, but again, time has taken its toll and it's probably not as effective as it once was. And just underneath there at the bottom of the compartment is the motor. I've had all this machine to bits completely stripped down actually to clean it. I didn't do anything with the motor. I don't like to take motors apart. The motor sounds okay to my ears, but I have had everything apart and everything cleaned out. So it doesn't smell. It still has a, a vintage odor, but it's not quite as musty as it was. I think most of the smell actually, yes, is still coming from this bag. If I was to wash the bag, the smell would go. I might gently wash the bag, but I don't think it's, it's really worth it. Let's pop that bag inside there to give it some sort of protection. Try and fold it over. The paper bag would have fitted in a similar way. You'd have folded it over the top of the cloth bag and then you'd have put the end cap back on, position it correctly, and then secure the metal clips. Okay, now first demonstration is going to be on my kitchen floor. As I said, I've done a demo earlier today and I've left the dirt that the cleaner didn't cope with. I, I used a quite a modern vacuum cleaner and it wasn't very good on hard floors. So I'm going to attach the carpet and floor nozzle. I'm going to put it actually in setting two, which is a hard floor position. So I'll try it first without the buffing pad, but then I'll put the buffing pad on when I clean another section. To avoid me stooping or bending, I'm going to attach the extension wand slash handle to the end like this. There we go, that's clicked in place. And onto the end of the extension wand slash handle, I'm going to put the top part of the handle, which incorporates the hand grip, and of course, the exhaust vent. Okay, well, one thing I haven't shown you, well, two things. I've kept the original plug from the unboxing video. I thought it was nice to keep, but I have rewired it, so it's wired up correctly. It wasn't incorrect the wiring, it just wasn't done very well. And this filthy, filthy flex that I remember showing you, getting covered in dirt from this cleaner when I unboxed it, is now lovely and clean. And it's, I love the way it color coordinates with the vacuum. Okay, we've, we've seen this lovely old girl. Is she going to pick up as well as she looks? I somehow don't think so. This is a learning curve for me. I've no idea how this cleaner is going to work. The suction isn't fantastic, but, well, there's no harm in trying. So let's go on to, into the kitchen now and see how this Hooverette performs. Here's the main area of dirt that the previous vacuum demo left. It was an upright cleaner and it tended to scatter a lot of the dirt behind it, which is what we can see here. So, I wonder if this old Hooverette is going to do any better and cleaning this up. I'll just do a small area first with the standard nozzle and then we'll fit the buffing pad. Down. That's pretty good. Yeah, it hasn't really 
spat out a lot. Well, I'm surprised. That's done, a, that's done a much better job than I expected it to. Okay, then I'll just pop that down while I go and get the buffing pad and finish the job. Right, let's tackle this area. There's quite a lot of flour in here, actually. And there's some uh, rolled oats, I think I can see. Probably, knowing me, there'll be some rice. Let's see if the buffing pad is an improvement or a hindrance. <laughs> is very similar. The one thing I will say though with the buffing pad it does glide over the floor easier so I can understand why Hoover introduced that. It does help if you've got more delicate floors I suppose it will help to protect them and not scratch them. But all in all I'm pretty impressed with this. I did not expect it to be quite as good for such an old machine. I'll just take the buffing pad off and just finish the job. I'll just clean up the rest in the corner. done it's left a few bits right up to the edge but that's no problem with the hooverette because I'll just attach the hose and crevice tool and then I'll be able to reach all that dirt <laughs> And to conclude the demonstration in the kitchen, I've set up the hoovrette in a different way. As you can see, I've now attached the handle to the end, but without the extension tube. And I've put the extension tube on the far end. This enables me to clean under low furniture easier. But uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to clean the rest of this mess up in front of the washing machine. Because the Hooverette was designed for quick pickups, much like our modern cordless cleaners of today, I've not put down a huge amount of dirt. I don't think it would be fair, because this machine wasn't designed for that. But I have put down the sort of dirt I put down to test modern vacuum cleaners. I'm not expecting great things, but I wasn't expecting great things from the floor demonstration. But floors are rather easier to clean than carpets. But nevertheless, we need to test the cleaner on carpets as well. So I will pass it forward and back slowly through the middle, but that's not the way it's going to clean all this mess up. I am going to have to do a fair bit of toing and throwing back and forth, I think, in order to clean it all up. And even then, it might not remove everything. But anyway, it's on setting one, which is the floating brush position. We'll see how it performs on that, and then we'll try it on setting two, the fixed brush position. <laughs> Obviously it's left the hairs and the carpet fluff, a lot of cleaners leave that, and yes it's left some of the other bits as well, but considering it was just one forward and one backward pass, 
that is not bad at all considering the age of this vacuum cleaner. I should really do a test <laughs> against this and the DC35. In fact I've done a DC35 video not that long ago and the results weren't that different to be quite honest with you. Anyway, I'm going to actually put it on the fixed brush. I'll pass it again through the middle but we'll give it a bit of agitation see if we can make any dent in the hairs. Well, it's certainly lifting the carpet a bit better but it's tending to roll the hairs around a bit so it's still not doing all that well on the hairs but anyway it's still not a bad result that that is probably with the brush down it's probably better than the dc35 performed so mr dyson despite all your claims some old-fashioned technology can beat your technology and i'm wondering if we'll see a dc35 of the age this hooverette is still working maybe i'll be alive to show you, who knows. Let's see how we can deal with the rest of this dirt. Let's just vacuum with it normally now. picked up the majority of the surface litter but as you can see it's the hairs it sort of rolled them up a bit but it's not removed them I'll just once more try it with the brush in the locked oops it spat out some dirt it didn't like the taste of it let's just put the brush in the locked position there we go it's a little bit temperamental let me just get it in the open position for you. Oh, I had trouble with this when I was taking it apart. Oh it worked fine before didn't it? Yeah, it's floating now and there oh it's not it's not working. It's that Mr Dyson heard and he's put a curse on me. Anyway, that'll do. I think, yes, that's it. That's it now. Let's have another go. the old Hoover Junior advert went. With an ordinary suction cleaner you can work and work away and there's still dirt in your carpet. To remove it, here's the Hoover Junior. Well, I do have a couple of Hoover Juniors but not to hand at the moment, but with Hoover Junior I'd certainly be able to get all this pet hair up. Here we see Roger wearing the latest fashion accessory for the autumn winter season, the Hooverette by Hoover. Finished in this stylish gay colour scheme, the Hooverette tackles all your home cleaning at a touch. Yes? <laughs> oh dear, I need, it. I need to lie down. Here we are, I've got the Hooverette securely on my shoulder. I've got the, the all-purpose brush on the end of the hose and now I can venture up my stairs with no worries. I can clean from top to bottom or from bottom to top. No stretching of hoses, no lugging heavy cleaners around. All the weight is on my shoulder. It's very light, in fact, I'm sure it's lighter than most ladies' handbags. So I can run up the stairs and do all my cleaning. Hoover it. 
from Hoover, the must-have fashion accessory for autumn winter. Well, now if you really have to, you must. Yes. <laughs> I see. Oh well, if that's your decision, I'll uh, I'll stand by you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Oh God, I forgot that window was uh, unblinded. Oh, hi, oh, hi, uh, yes, right. Summing up, summing up the Hooverette. Whew, oh, I'm a bit stir crazy today. This is the last, no, actually I've got another quick video to do and then it's tidy up time. This is an absolute revelation. Looks fantastic on camera. I can only see it in my tiny viewfinder, but it looks almost new, doesn't it? Brilliant. A revelation. Um, I did not expect a cleaner with this such a low wattage motor and such fairly weak power weak suction to clean as well as this little machine and it's very convenient to use, not too noisy, light, but of course it's from the, of the olden days, it's an old machine, they don't make it anymore, but I've got one here that I'm keeping hold of and preserving and I know there's several collectors that have Hooverettes and still use them in fact. One collector I believe, Alan, Alan, P. Jack, I believe he uses a Hooverette in his kitchen. And I can see why now, Alan. I thought, well, what's he using an old thing like that for? I can understand why you do now. Not that I'm going to. I do still like to use modern machines for day-to-day -day use. But there's nothing wrong with this old girl. Nothing wrong at all. Fantastic. Okay, so that's a vintage demo. If you don't like the vintage machines, you won't be watching now. So, sorry if you didn't like this one. There'll be plenty more modern cleaners for you and some less vintage machines. But they're all vacuum cleaners, aren't they? They all have interest in their own ways, I suppose. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and you'll be updated every time I upload a new video. And of course, please check my back catalogue. <sighs> Must have nearly 500 videos by now for you to watch that have taken me hundreds and hundreds of hours to make. So please see what I used to get up to in the old days when I first started. Some of the videos aren't very good. I, I think I have got a bit better as I've got used to doing this. I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve, more things I'm learning about camera technique. So there might be some surprising videos coming up for you in the future. So stay tuned. So until the next time, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.